temple. We Let all the earth remain silent before him. We will walk in light, beauty, oh, oh, come where the dew drops on mercy shine bright. Shine, go shine all around us by day and by night. Yeah, Jesus, the light of the world, heart the herald angels sing. Jesus, the light of the world. Glory to the newborn King, Jesus, the light of the world. We'll walk in the light, it's a beautiful light. Oh, oh come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright. Shine, no. shine all around us by day and by night. It's Jesus, the light of the Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, all the deep heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. I was glad when they said it to me. Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For if they and thy courts is better than a thousand, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in my house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I'll sing to the Lord a new song, praising other marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth sing praises. Number four. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Number four in your hymnal. All hail the power of Jesus, name. let angels prostrate forth, bring forth the royal diadem, and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem, and crown him Lord of all. Ye chosen seed of Israel's race, ye ransom. From the fall, hail him who saved you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. Hail him who saved you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. Sinners who love can never forget the word and the gall. Go spread your trophies at his feet and crown him Lord of all. Go spread your trophies at his feet and crown him Lord of all. Let every kindred, every tribe on this terrestrial ball to him all majesty ascribe and crown. Lord of all, to him of majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all. Oh, that with thunder sacred throne we at his feet may fall, we'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord.
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the name of Jesus. There's something about the name of Jesus that transforms things, that calms things, that makes things peaceful. There's something about the name of Jesus that has power in Jesus' name. They were saved and they were protected and they were blessed and the demons had to flee. The work was done in Jesus' name. And whatever name you have today, take the name of Jesus with you. You might need it one day. In these crazy times, you need Jesus every day. Yes. With the lies, with the disasters, with the foolishness, you need not only his name, you need his presence. So whatever power that you might need, take Jesus' name with you. All power is ascribed to him. All mercy and grace is ascribed to him. He came back so that we could learn to use some of that power. Call on his name. Pray to him when nobody else will listen to you and you can't get caught or any place else. Call on the name of Jesus. So Jesus, we thank you this morning that you have given us a place that is clean and safe and comfortable that we may come and fellowship together. Thank you. Yes, Lord. You didn't have to do it, Lord. We could have been out in the streets. But the word says, call his name. Mm. Always honor his name. Wherever you are, in a cathedral castle or just in the streets, call his name. There's power in the name. So in Jesus' name, this morning we say thank you. We say bless those, Lord, who need a blessing. Help those, Lord, who don't have any help. Feed those, Lord, when the neighbors have forgotten to feed and grant grace, Lord, where there is no mercy and there is no grace. Lord, until we get there, have them to hold out until we can come and call your name, until we can come and sing your name, until we can access your name, Lord, for more power and for more life. He's trained us. The Father has sent the Son to train us to do these things. So when the word and the situation and the circumstance happens, let us call on his name. For those who are not with us today, for those who are traveling, for those who are in the hospital, for those who have other business more pressing than to come and to pray, keep them, Lord, until they're allowed to come back. And we pray that you send them back quickly so that we may Sing with them, that we may pray with them. We may fellowship and laugh and eat with them. And we'll do it in that powerful name that you taught us to say. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. Incline the ear to us and grant us thy Rock of Ages, but for me. Rock of Ages, have for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wound inside which flowed be of sin the double cure, save from wrath and make me pure. Could my tears forever flow, could my zeal no longer know, these of sin could not atone, I was saved and thou alone, in my hand, O Christ, I bring, simply to Thy Christ I free, where all 
I draw this fleeting breath, when my eyes shall close in death, when I rise to worlds unknown, and behold the young life's own, rock of ages cleft for me, let me hide myself in comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 18, verses 1 through 12. Jeremiah, the 18th chapter, verses 1 through 12. Your words should be very close to mine. I'm using the American Standard translation this morning. Jeremiah 18, verses 1 through 12. Then I went down to the potter's house. And there he was making something on the wheel. But the vessel that he was making of clay was spoiled in the hand of the potter. So he remade it into another vessel as it pleased the potter to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Can I not, O house of Israel, deal with you as the potter does, declares the Lord? Behold, like the clay on the potter's hand, so you are in my hand, O house of Israel. At one moment I might speak concerning a nation, or concerning a kingdom to uproot and pull down, or to destroy. If that nation against which I have spoken turns from its evil, I will relent concerning the calamity I plan to bring on it. Or at another moment, I might speak concerning a nation or concerning a kingdom to build up and to plan it. <coughs> what if it does evil in my sight by not obeying my voice? Then I will think better of the good with which I had promised and blessed it. So now, speak to the men of Judah and against the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I am fashioning calamity against you, and devising a plan against you. O oh, turn back each of you from his evil way, and reform your ways and your deeds. But then we'll say, It's hopeless, for we are all going to follow up not our own plans, each one of us according to the stubbornness of his evil heart. These are God's words for God's people from all that dwells below the skies. From all that dwells below the skies, let thy creator praise our minds, let thy Redeemer's name be sung. all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shall have no other gods before me. Lord, have mercy on us and incline our hearts to keep this law. My soul beyond thy God ten thousand foes arise and hosts of sin Our Savior said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The next song is Knocking.
in your hymnal, but if you know any of it, please join us. After a risen Savior, he's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And at the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along my narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. In all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through the sorry blast. The day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, with Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along my narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to an heart. You ask me how I know he Lift up your voice and sing Eternal hallelujah To Jesus Christ the King The hope of all who seek Him The help of all who find No other is so loving So good and kind He lives, he lives Christ Jesus lives today He walks with me And talks with me Along my narrow way he lives, he lives, salvation to him for. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Amen. Good morning, Lord Chapel. Good morning. God bless you. Remember I always tell you people are watching you? Thank you. I don't care if you believe it or not. I'm gonna keep telling yeah. you. Somebody's always watching you. Yeah. You 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 have some people in the back who've been watching you. Amy Rivers and Sky Yates have come from Colorado. All right. To see if this is real, if it's just on Zoom. No, it, it's it's real. Now, both of them worked with me when I first got here uh, in the library, um, in many community issues to uh, lift up people. Now, Amy left, got married, and became a notable writer in, in Colorado. What city are you in? Boulder. Boulder, yeah. yeah that, that famous place up there where Celestial Seasons tea is made, and there's a whole bunch of stuff up there. But she's a notable writer now, and she has a group of writers that she works with. People are always watching you, regardless if you know it or not. And they say things about you, whether they're true or not. But they came... Uh, because they've seen us on the air and they've supported our programs. And believe it or not, they can become members just like anybody else in Zoom land. Is that what it is, Katie? Zoom? No, it's a uh, cyber world. Cyber world. <laughs> so, Amy and Sky, would you would you greet uh, the congregation with anything that you'd like to say? Anything at all? You gotta stand up. This is how they teach us when we're younger. <laughs> so we're really happy. Scott? Yes, same thing. Uh, we're uh, good friends with Warren. We've known him from a lot, for a long time. And happy to share uh, share the word of God with you all today. Welcome. Amen. Amen. Very good. Do you ever get to watch us in Cyber World? Occasionally. Okay. Am I I stay away from Cyber World as much as possible. I understand. <laughs> you understand? They want to stay away from Cyber World, so they had to come see us live. <laughs> You had to come see us live. If you would like, uh, join us for our, our meal afterwards. And we have some people who don't even eat here, but they, you can take it with you if you like. It's, it's blessed food. Amen. Any other announcements from anybody else? Keep your head. 
give Alan and the kids my best. Would you? Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, hello, Owen Chapel, and hello, everyone out there in the cyber world. <laughs> um, I would like to talk about, um, we're going to have a, well, I, I, I'm going to talk about Missionary Sunday, and actually, there's a theme I kind of thought of all of a sudden. It was called, it's called, um, your, what, what hero in the Bible do you, does most identify with who's your hero in the Bible, and then also um, why. So I'm going to be passing out um, information or just asking anybody who would like to be a part of this to do it. It's gonna not going to be until October, so we'll let you know the, the closer it comes. But now I'd like to do our regular <laughs> happy birthday um, song for everybody who's born in this month of September. Anybody born in September? Yay! Yay. Susan. Susan. What? Anybody else? All right, My we're gonna say happy birthday to Susan. My younger granddaughter. Oh, okay. What's her name? Uh, Addison. 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 And happy birthday to Addison. So let's sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Everybody in September. Happy birthday. <laughs> August the 20th, uh, the church decided to give me one more year. And so they gave me a pastoral appointment. I passed it out last week, but some people may have missed it. So can I read my appointment to you? So yeah, you know that yeah, so, so I'm earning my money, yeah. that I'm supposed to be here. Because they can pull this thing from me anytime they want to. Now listen to me. God can do the same thing. If you're not about his business, he'll pull you. He'll put somebody else in your place. Yes, sir. But he'll forgive you and he'll give you a chance to come back. So I got one more year. Under the protection of Almighty God, Certificate of Pastoral Appointment, this is to certify that Reverend Warren Robinson is appointed to the pastoral charge of Owen Chapel and said charge being under the jurisdiction of the Desert Mountain Annual Conference of the African Methodist Episcopal Church given under my hand and the denominational seal of the Episcopal room this 20th day of August in the year of 2020. The Honorable Prelate, Clement W. Feud. Amen. Amen. Uh, yes. Charles Coleman, come on up here, would you? I'm going to tell stories and folks. When I, when I got here, uh, I talked to the presiding elder. He said, yeah, come up front. He said, I, I, I want you to go and I want you to go see Cromer. Said, Who's Cromer? He said, just go see Cromer. Mm -hmm. Cromer will tell you the truth. So Cromer ran with me from, from the minute I got here. And we went to the conference one time and he was going to give a report. And, you know, he couldn't bring all the words together. And the bishop said, tell me about your pastor. Cromer said, beep, beep. <laughs> and we fell out. This is to certify the appointment of Charles Cromer. He's been appointed as the steward at Warren Chapel in the church for the 2022-2023 5th District Conference year. On this day, September the 4th, 2022. Congratulations. Yay! Elder Simon, would you come forth? These people have been serving since the minute I got here. That's 2003. It was November. And I only stayed a week, and I went back and celebrated Thanksgiving with my, with my family. And I didn't know if they think I was going to leave them or not. Is he coming back? <laughs> well, I'll come back. Certificate of appointment. Albert Simon Jr. has been appointed as steward pro tem of Owen Chapel in the church for the conference year of 2022-23. On this day, September the 4th, 2022. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So if you look around the building, 
if you like what you see, you want to give him credit. Uh, he's painted and cleaned and fixed up and ensured and made sure that you have a building to be in. When I got here, it was in order. Say amen. 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 When I leave here, it will be in order. Say amen. 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 You see, God puts people in charge who will do what they're supposed to do. The certificate reads, certificate of appointment. This certifies that George Gregory has been appointed as trustee of Owen Chapel in the church for the 2022-2023 Fifth District Conference year. On this day, September the 4th, 2023. Congratulations. Yeah. Very briefly after we get done eating, we'll meet as close to 12.30 as possible. We'll have a brief meeting where George will outline, and maybe Albert and Cormer, what we're going to do until I'm gone. You have to plan for the future, amen? Amen. You, you got to train your replacement, amen? Amen. So they have some thoughts, they have some plans, and some energy that they'd like you to be involved with as they prepare for my transition. That sounds ominous, doesn't it? Yeah. It's not. Transition is what life is. That's what life is. Life is constant change. Yeah. If you don't change, you will rot. And then that's change too. You understand? You have to get ready for the future. You can live today. You can live in the present. I try to always live in the moment. But after the moment is gone, you have to prepare for the future. And so we'll have a brief meeting in the sanctuary after we have our meal. All minds clear? Yes. Any complaints? Any questions? Anything? On Wednesday... Four o'clock, we will have our history slash new members meeting. It will be a short summary of the Amy Church. You will all be given a book. Uh, there will be questions in it. And when you've completed the training, it'll take about four hours, maybe max. I'll give you a certificate that you are updated and trained in the policies and the polity of the Amy Church. And then you'll be smart. You know how to be smart? Well, yeah. you'll be smart anyways. So that's this. Wednesday at 4 o'clock, 4 to 5. We'll only keep you here an hour, and that will be our study for the month of September. What are we going to... It will be on Zoom or live stream if oh. people want to join on Zoom. Amy, if you want to see our training from Colorado, it, it will be online. <laughs> uh, thank you, darling. Um, we have people in Oregon, in Florida, in Georgia, in Colorado, in California, we have a lot of people who watch what we do, uh, our Bible study and our Sunday worship. So uh, they want to keep up with us. And again, you don't know all that God is doing. I have people who send me donations from places that I haven't seen in years. Amen? Because yeah. they like the work. They like what you're doing here at Owen Chapel. They can't be here like Amy and Sky today, but they send their donations. They send their prayers, and they send whatever membership they can. I, mean, I, I can't have people from Florida coming here all the time, but if they'll send their money and their prayers, I include them. So Wednesday at 4 o'clock, we'll have four of those sessions for September, and then we'll have to decide in October what we're going to do for Bible study, okay? Can yes. anybody get inspiration? Let me know. What's that? I said yes. Yes. So, uh, again, the last two years, and this is Albert's fault, he says, well, tell me about Obadiah. It's a short book. And I said, okay. And we read Obadiah. And then we picked books and studies to go from there. And it's been wonderful. <coughs> sometimes I teach. Sometimes they teach. Most of the time, the Holy Spirit teaches, and we all learn something. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Okay. All minds clear? Yes. Yes, Pastor yes sir. Excuse me. At the end of your transition, you're not leaving the area, are you? You'll still uh, be here. We'll check with the Lord. I plan to be here. Okay, sir. But as I'll tell you later, it's in God's hands. Amen. Yeah. I plan to be here. Okay. I, I like Alamogordo. But that'll give me time to come visit um, people up Motor, Colorado. I got a place to stay if I come up there. Absolutely. You, you understand how this works? <laughs> Treat people the way you want to be treated. And then they're more likely to do the same. People are watching you. People are looking to you for an example. People who have fallen and stumbled want to know how you can walk and not do the same. So they watch you. 
God would wash me. I don't know what God's going to do with me. Pray for me. I plan to be here, and uh, the transition hopefully will be just from the church back out into serving God in the world. I don't mean the final transition. I, I don't know when that's going to be. But yes, by law, uh, there will be another person who will be appointed, just like I read to you. They'll get an appointment, and they'll come here, and you guys treat them nice, okay? Be patient with them, okay? All right. Any other announcements? Yes. Could you remind us when the memorial is for Ernest Lynn? <coughs> Christina, yep. is it going to be Thursday? No. Friday. 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 Yeah. Immaculate. Immaculate Conception. At what time? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. I don't know if it's going to be viewed, so if you want to uh, go there, it'll be 10 o'clock on Thursday. Now, Jordan? I thought they said Friday. Thursday. Excuse me. Friday. I'm sorry, Friday. Now, we're going to have a memorial, but that's being determined. We haven't decided when that's going to be. Friday, 10 o'clock at ICC, right? Okay. Uh, we will be providing food. They wanted us to bring a dish, so we will provide food for where the gathering is. Now, they would like to use this church, but this church can't take 200 people. Amen? <laughs> so we'll work it out where uh, some people who can't go very far can come down here. But I think they've already rented another place where they're going to have the reception. They're still working on it. The family has contacted me, and they thank you for the prayers that you've given and the support and whatever dish you're going to provide for the repast. Amen? Yes, Albert? Has anybody contacted you about R.T. Bowie? No. No. Is there a relative of R.T. Bowie that you know of? Well, I, I mean, I, I know the whole family, but I thought somebody by now would have said something or been even shown up here in church. So if you could have them contact me, I don't okay. know them. I, I, yeah, okay. And I would be glad to announce whatever uh, they want to do for his memorial, and I can be a part of it. But I don't know him, and I don't know the family, and so I'm kind of in the dark. Yeah, I understand. Okay, I'll give you my card. Have him call me, and I'll be at whatever service I can. Any other announcements? Any at all? Okay, choir. Sure. It's you. <laughs> I thought number one would surely be me. I thought I could be all I wanted to be. Thought I could be. On life seeking sad, but I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Thought I had done a lot on my own, thought I could make it, make it all along. Thought of myself as a mighty. But I can't even walk without you holding my head. Oh, the mountains too high and the valleys too wide. Down on my knees, I prayed to stand. But I can't even walk. No, I can't even walk. I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Coming from the, the book of St. Luke, 14th chapter, hear these words. St. Luke, chapter 14, we're going to start at verse 25. Now great multitudes were going along with him, and he turned and he said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brother and sister, yes, even his own wife, he cannot be my discipline, my disciple, excuse me. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me 
cannot be my disciple. For which one of you, when he wants to build a tower, does not sit down and calculate the cost to see if he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish it, all who observe it begin will begin to ridicule him. Saying this man began to build and was not able to finish. It's not a good thing. When he couldn't finish the battle, who will first sit down and take account whether he is strong enough with 10,000 men to encounter the one coming against him with 20,000? Or else, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks terms of peace. So therefore, no one of you can be my disciple who does not give up all of his own possessions. Therefore, salt is good, but even salt becomes tasteless. With that, what will it be seasoned with? What will your soup be, food be seasoned with? Salt becomes useless and will be thrown into the soil or to the manure pile. It's thrown out. But he who has ears, let him hear. These are God's words for God's people. I trust in God wherever he may be upon the land upon the rolling sea for come what may from day to day my heavenly father watches over me i trust in god I know he cares for me on a mountain bleak or on the stormy sea. The billows roll, he keeps my soul. My heavenly Father watches over me. He makes the rose an object of his care. He guides the eagle through the pathless air. And surely he remembers me. My heavenly Father watches over me. I trust in God. I know he cares for me on a mountain bleak and on the stormy sea. Though billows roll, he keeps my soul. My heavenly Father watches over. was an old woman who lived alone and the children wanted to tease her. You know, children can be like that sometimes. Mm -hmm. Children can bully, children can hurt. Guess where they learned that from? Adults. Yeah. So they were going to tease this old woman. They said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to catch a bird and we're going to hold the bird in our hand. Then we'll ask the old woman what we're going to do with it. They say she's wise. They say that she has great understanding. We'll find out. So they catch the bird and they go to the old woman and say, old woman, we caught a bird. They said that you're wise. Tell us, tell us, tell us what we're going to do with the bird. The woman thought and thought. She says, I know. And they said, what are we going to do with it? If she said they were going to let it go, then she, they were going to kill the bird. If they were going to kill the bird, then they were going to let it go. So the old woman looked at them and said, you know, here's what you're going to do. And they waited, and they waited, and they waited. Well, give us the answer. And she says, whatever you do, it's in your hands. 
The poet Mike Van Dorn says, wisdom doesn't come right away. Slowly, slowly, wisdom gathers. Golden dust in the afternoon. Somewhere between the sun and me. Sometimes so near that I can see. Never settling. Late or soon. Would that it did and a rug of gold spread west of me a mile or more, not large, but so that I might lie face up between the earth and the sky and know what none has known before. Then I could tell as best I could the secrets of the shining place, the web of the world, how thick, how thin, how firm with all things folded in, how ancient and how full of grace. It's in God's hands. Amen? Amen? It's in God's hands. In the scripture that I read to you this morning, God takes Jeremiah down to the potter's house. Amen? He said, come on, I want, I want to show you wisdom, Jeremiah. So he takes him down to the potter's house, and sure enough, he shows Jeremiah that there's a potter there, and he has a lump of clay on the wheel, and it's spinning, and he's working on it. He says to Jeremiah, watch. The potter carefully and beautifully molds the form of clay. Amen? But there are some parts of the clay that are a little bit drier than it should be. Amen? And it starts to break apart. Anybody ever work with clay? It can't be too wet. It can't be too dry. It has to have the right consistency <laughs> so you can mold it. So that you can fashion it the way that you want. Look, Jeremiah. See, the potter gently guides the form of the clay on the wheel. I talked to some potters. You know, when you're making that pot, the inside hand and the outside hand are different. The inside hand helps the pot to have the circumference that it needs. The outside hand helps to build it up so that sometimes you build from the inside and sometimes you build from the outside. Are you following me? Only a skilled potter knows how to build the inside and the outside at the same time. And God says to Jeremiah, if the clay is misshapen, if it's disformed, the potter can stop the process and take the clay back to fancy wet dirt. He can remake it. He can reshape it. He can remold, remold it and make it a better form. Amen. And Jeremiah, if the potter can do this to the clay, what do you think I can do with the nation of Israel, which was formed and created by me? Go tell the nation. They have messed up and have turned against their maker, the master potter. So Jeremiah tells the people that their petty and your puny plans will not prosper. See, when you turn against God, you got trouble. He formed you in your mother's womb before you had a name. He, he knitted the bones together. He made you what you are. Now, you, you aren't fully done yet, but he formed you. Your ways are not God's ways. Amen? And so to get their full attention... He says, I have a plan for these people that's going to bring calamity, that's going to bring desolation. They didn't want to hear it the easy way. Now I'm going to give them a lesson that's hard for them. Tell them since they didn't want the easy way, they're going to have it the hard way. Since they rejected me, I'm going to turn my back on them, and they shall not see my face. You don't want God to turn his face away from you. You don't ever want that to happen. Israel had turned away from justice. Israel had turned away from sincere worship. The people followed the gods and the practices from outside of God's instruction. Oh, that looks good. Let's try that. That sounds good. Let's try that. Oh, that's a beautiful calf. Let's go get us a calf of gold. They followed the practices that were not what God told them to do. 
They felt, anybody have a feeling about something? They felt that their way was better than God's way. And so they were headed for a difficult lesson. Jeremiah will tell the folks, they're going to go into dissolution. They're going to be taken to a foreign land, and, and the captors, their enemies, will teach them the lesson. Do you hear the poem? Slowly, slowly, the lessons of life sink in. Here's how it happens. We get hurt. Amen. And then we get humbled. And then God comes along and gives us his full measure of grace. Jesus tells us about the prodigal son. You guys remember? The prodigal son wanted, he wanted his inheritance right now. He didn't want to wait until his father passed. He said, I want it right now. He wanted to go do what he wanted to do because he just knew that he understood everything. Wisdom had not sunk into his system yet. He wanted to do everything his way. The scriptures say that the father relented and gave his son half of his inheritance. And the son went out into the world to learn. Have any of you started something that you thought was going to go one way and went another way? Have you ever trusted somebody on one thing and it turned sideways? And you found out, this is not what I thought. She told me she was going to do this. Not. He told me that he was going to do this. Not. 